Hey, everybody. How you doing? This is Jim Grisanzio from Oracle, and we're back tonight to talk a little bit more Oracle Developer Live. I'm doing some interviews with some of the key speakers at the upcoming event, uh, which is at the end of March. And this one is on Java Innovations. And I'm here with Gavin Bierman from the UK. Gavin, welcome. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. It's very nice to meet you. I believe this is actually the first time we're meeting, and um, hopefully we can meet again actually physically live instead of you know virtually live. Um, I think everyone hopes that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so, uh, Gavin, uh, you're in the Java Platform Group, an engineer in the Java Platform Group, and you are um, doing a talk um, at next month on uh, Java Language Futures, the Spring 20. 21 edition. So um, I'm really interested in the future, as I'm sure any any Java developer, actually anybody would be. Um, but Java is an open source project. So a lot of these things are taking place in terms of conversations and code integrations and things like that in the open. So um, tell me a little bit about what you're going to be talking about. What are some of the features that are you know up, you know, up and coming in, uh, in Java? Sure. So... Um... I think my talk will start with some of the new features that we're shipping with Java 16, which we will be shipping next month. Um, so at the language level, which is where, where I live, um, we're shipping two uh, final features. So features that will be permanently in the language. Those are record classes and pattern matching for instance of. And we're also shipping uh, a preview feature called sealed classes, which is uh, on its second preview. So we're hoping that that will finalize in Java 17. And then from that starting point, um, I want to really get on to the exciting stuff, which is talking about where we see the language going in the future. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about some of the features that we very recently um, uh, published in JEPS for features that will hopefully preview in 17 and beyond and give some sense to the audience of where we see the language going in, in the future. So how, you know, when you talk about futures, obviously predicting the future is sometimes difficult um, <laughs> considering recent history. Um, but how, so how long do you look out? How many years or even how many months? Uh, well, it's a good question. So it's definitely several years. Okay. Um, so when we, we kind of have a big umbrella project, which is called Project Amber. And the idea with Project Amber is to kind of look at uh, changes to the language at the sort of surface level. So not really deep changes to the VM and so on. Those get covered in other projects, but really things that we can do to streamline uh, the language, um, responding to the sorts of things people are doing with Java today that they probably weren't doing when Java was invented. Um, and so that's a, that's a big project and that's you know, probably five years plus of, of work. Um, we have this new release cycle where we're releasing new versions of Java now every six months. And that's obviously presented us with a challenge uh, on, on the sort of design process. But actually it's uh, surprisingly, it certainly surprised us actually, uh, it's made it sort of liberated us in a way because we can take a really big idea, which before we would just ship in one huge bag of tricks. So every six years, or you know, we probably initially said four years, probably six years or eight years or something, we'd just deliver this huge bag of new stuff on on our user base and just say, there it is. Uh, it's huge. Get, Good luck. You know, get on with it. <laughs> um, and. With the much more frequent release cycle, we're able to say, well, we, we've got a sense of what this big bag of features is going to be, but let's, let's break it up into small right. pieces and build, build them on top of each other, and let's release them in these small pieces so people can get, a, get to use it. And we get amazing feedback that we never got in the old model, where people can try the very first piece and go, you know what? it's not as good as I hoped for. I really wished it could do this. And yeah. we go, oh, that's interesting. And so we get a chance to refine our design. Uh, the other thing, I mentioned it earlier, is that we have this new idea of a preview feature. So we're able to add a feature to the language, but it's not, 
not permanent. So it's in preview mode. Right. You have to use a flag to use it um, from the compiler, and you have to use a, the same flag actually to use the to get the VM to use it as well. So there's no way you can use one of these preview features by mistake. You have to explicitly ask for it. Um, so we can't get some customer in trouble where they've ended up unknowingly relying on a feature that we then go and change. So this is great for us because we can release something. It's not a flaky piece of software. It comes with all the standard, you know, Java or Oracle Java guarantees you would expect, which is a jet, full specification, proper heart, you know, serious implementation with tests and so on. But it's there in a release. We look at the feedback and then we decide what to do. We do one of two things. We either throw it away and say, it's a terrible idea. So far, we've not done that. Um, or we put it out for another preview. So we might refine it or polish it and give people another six months to try it. And at the moment, after two preview releases, we get enough experience and we get enough feedback from the community that we can make a decision about whether we finalize it. And so it really becomes a feature in the language forever or, whether, or we don't. And this is very uh, interesting side effect of this new uh, release cycle that we're able to slowly um, bring features to the community, we can refine it, and also we can then slowly build other features on top of those as well. Um, so at the moment, you know, we have SEAL classes, for example, in preview, but we're already announcing in a JEP how we plan to extend pattern matching, which is finalizing in 16, how we intend to find, uh, extend pattern matching to know about SEAL classes. So we're sort of building features on top of each other but it's in a gradual process that everyone can see. It's in the open. And it's not this sort of huge bag of complexity that right. comes in one shot. And I think it's um, this has been an interesting and, and positive experience for us as the designers and implementers of, of, uh, of the language. But I think it's also been a good experience as well for our community. At least that's the feedback that we've got, that they enjoy seeing things being presented in small pieces that they can really get on top of, that right. they have time to try them out. They can give us feedback, everything's open, and, and then we can evolve together the language. And I think that's, that's a great, great thing. Yeah, so it seems like you've really struck a nice balance between, you know, short term actually releasing lots of code, you know, in obviously, you know, obviously frequently, but also long term. Um, and these longer term things here, which is going to be the focus of your talk, you're getting, you're actually getting direct feedback on open million lists on long-term features, right? I mean, these are open discussions that are taking place. Yes. So we have, um, we have what we call spec experts. Um, so these are sort of um, important people in our community have agreed to help us. And we have discussions, open discussions about the design. Uh, anyone can look at these mail archives and have a look and see the discussions between uh, the designers, the developers, and, and these experts. Um, and they can see exactly how we've arrived at the final design. And we, we really do get you know, positive and negative feedback on the design. Uh, it's an iterative process. So we take seriously everything said and we propose alternatives and we discuss them and we evolve them and it's all completely in the open um, so people and can see uh, how, how we got to a decision. Yeah, and, and that's a valuable contribution. I was talking to Jesper Wilhelmsen actually last night about contributing, you know, to OpenJDK. Just that, that conversation alone about, you know, future architecture and things like that uh, is a way for somebody to offer their expertise, um, even though they don't write a single line of code, right? They might be obviously familiar with that stuff, so they can, you know, offer that expertise. Uh, huge, huge contribution. Yes. Yes, yeah, oh. absolutely. And, and a lot of these experts are, you know, they're, they're big Java users. So we're able to literally ask some of them, hey, if we change this feature in this direction, how do you think it might impact on your code base? And for some of the, you know, our, our colleagues in the border community, they really come back to us and say, 
okay, that would affect, you know, 203 lines of our code or something like that. And we get real metrics from some of these people, um, which is fantastic. I mean, this is stuff that I think uh, language designers have never had in the past, right? Before wow. it was much more private behind the wall. You threw the big bag of features over the wall. Um, and now we, re we really uh, get, you know, very fine grained uh, feedback from, from the experts. So it's fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Gavin, I'm looking forward to your talk. I'll be there. Um, end of March, I'll have all the details for everybody, um, you, know, you know, down below with all the links and everything. And nice to meet you here. And hopefully we'll meet live for a couple of beers or something in the UK. Talk to you soon. Oh, look, look forward to that. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye-bye.